Hey everybody, today we're going to go through the install of an aftermarket tack into my 92 Dodge Cummins Turbo Diesel. First, let's start off with the tack itself. Uh, this is a Sea Star 4000 RPM Marine tack. I picked this tack for several reasons, and one of the main ones was the selectable alternator and belt configurations shown on the dial here, as well as a small uh, calibration pot, which is just going to help us get things dialed in dialed in perfectly once once we're installed. Secondly, let's talk about the housing. So I designed and 3D printed the housing for this tack. Uh, first, we'll start with the base. Here you can see we've got four counterboard scroll, uh, screw holes to mount the base to the, to the dash, as well as a large uh, locating recess, which is going to help keep everything square. Here we've got a conduit to allow the wiring to exit smoothly and be right in line with the dash right away, should minimize the impact of the wiring look on the aesthetic and of course on the bottom here we have a, a recessed hole to captivate the notch nut which is going to allow us to secure the tack housing to the base uh, smoothly uh, here you can see we have the base with uh, the housing already installed the screws and the nut and the housing mounting screw all already in the configuration that they're going to be in finally you can see the phillips head screw there which is how we're going to secure everything down and finally there's the cap pretty straightforward and the only modification I had to do the tachometer was to cut the posts down to meet my needs uh, with the length uh, so that they didn't stick out too far. With that, let's head to the Dodge and get this thing installed. Okay, now we're inside the Dodge. Next step is to actually align the tachometer where we want it. Obviously, I mean, I'm kind of going for a factory as possible approach here. So we're going to put it in the factory spot and... Hope that she'll ride there. I'm thinking right about here. It's going to be just, just beautiful. As you can see, I've actually got an arc or radius on the on the bottom there to match up with the dash dash pretty nicely, and it's uh, tilted back just a little bit to match uh, to match my gaze. Turned out to be a pretty nice little design here. All right, so I'm very unsure about this part, but obviously we don't have a lot of access for a drill bit here. So what I'm going to try and do is actually pre-melt holes in the dash to get my screws started. Uh, we'll see if that works. Okay, so now that we've got our holes started, it's time to assemble the final product here. Okay, so here we are. She's pretty well installed. Just got to clean up the wiring and uh, hook up. We've got black to ground. Uh, red's going to go to a 12 volt switched fuse box that I've got under the hood. Um, white is going to go out to the alternator W signal. There's plenty of good videos on how to get that wire off the alternator. And then green is going to be wired up to the dash lights. 
I really think that the design of the tack complements the red interior and uh, the factory gauges pretty well. It's a nice clean look. Okay, so when you're using an alternator based tachometer, there's a couple different things that are going to affect your RPM measurement. The first one is the ratio between the alternator pulley and the crank pulley. And the second is the number of poles that your alternator has. Now this is not a factory alternator. As you can see, it's only a six rib. Uh, that's the way I bought the truck. So we're kind of going to guess uh, where our RPMs are until we can get it calibrated and really get it dialed in. But I think we'll be able to get it pretty darn close. As you can see, I've got the uh, external voltage regulator because, again, bought it that way, but apparently factory one was no good. Okay, so for the illumination lamp for my tachometer, I'm going to be using a product I've never tried before. It's this 16-gauge uh, plug-in fuse holder slash connector. Basically, it just remote mounts the fuse for whatever reason and then uh, gives you an extra output. So that's what uh, we're going to be using today. And of course the instrument lamps here is fuse 14. Okay, so to mount this little extender to the fuse box, I've just got one of these 3M sticky pad uh, zip tie mounts. And I'll just, I'll just strap it down nice and tight there. It should stay out of the way and not rattle around for us. Okay, so I got the interior wiring buttoned up. All looks pretty nice. Uh, ended up just using spade terminals, spade connectors to put it all together. I would have really liked to use a four pin weather pack connector, but eh, it's inside. I don't have one. I don't care quite enough about it to go get one, so that'll do for now. We just got to tuck it up, hook up the power, and give it a test. Okay, we're in the Dodge. Tax installed. Haven't finished the switch panel yet, so my grid heater is uh, hot wired at the moment, but that's okay. About minus six Celsius right now. Let those grid heaters work for 10-15 uh, seconds here. All right, she should fire it up now. And there we go. All right, so we're back in the Dodge next day. Got the switch panel installed. Looks pretty good. So here's the tack. Working, fully installed. Works pretty good, still need to calibrate it. I think it might be just a little bit high right now. 